now be recorded. Okay, I'd like to call the Site Plan Review Committee to order for Tuesday, December 19th, 2023. Roll call, please. Mayor Kodowski? Here. Gary Paul? Here. Andy Krowski? Here. Dennis Persick? Here. Dale Quinn? Here. Carrie Rathburn? Here. And Pam Burns excused. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, and, and please remember our men and women throughout the world in uniform. I have no changes to the agenda. I need a motion to approve. I'll, approve, I'll vote, make the first motion. So we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Number five, action on the minutes from the Site Plan Review Committee of December 5, 2023. Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second to approve those minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you. Number six, action items. 6A, consider discuss act on a site plan review request for a new vestibule canopy and ex exterior Walk-in cooler freezer for Bel Air Cantina located at 1025 Lombardi Avenue, Suite 100, Parcel VA-1512. Aaron. All right, thank you. Uh, let me... Uh... You're dead, Aaron. That's not on. Yep, there. I think it's... No, no. Here. There we go. There you go. There it is. All right. Uh, let me just share my screen here, and I'll bring up the uh, site plan. Uh, as discussed, this is for a tenant build-out uh, in the Title Town Tech Building, uh, the last space there on the first floor. Uh, you can see right here is the build-out space. Uh, it does extend uh, from the Lombardi Avenue frontage back to the uh, plaza area on the back side of Title Town uh, itself. Uh, proposed addition uh, on the exterior uh, is pretty straightforward. It includes just a vestibule uh, build-out uh, right here on the exterior, as well as a canopy that mimics the uh, uh, turn canopy as well on the Title Town Plaza uh, portion of the development. Uh, one other uh, small item is the addition of a uh, walk-in freezer cooler uh, in the fenced-in area uh, loading dock between Hinterland and Title Town Tech. Aaron, uh, yep. that's the only problem I had looking at that that's inside of the brewery's uh, towers where they have their wheats and whatever, that fenced in area. That's correct. It's all sealed, concealed, I should say. It is it is fenced in, yeah. Uh, okay, all right. Yep. And any uh, roof or any uh, uh, mechanicals that might ex uh, extend above the fence uh, for the cooler would be screened. Uh, in terms of uh, recommended conditions of approval, uh, there are a few. Uh, screen any rooftop or ground mounted mechanical units visible from the property boundaries or Lombardi Avenue right of way. Uh, signage is to be permitted through a separate process. Uh, from public safety, coordinate uh, with APS on the location of a Knox box near the Lombardi Avenue entrance. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, otherwise, the uh, uh, Stephen Weber, architect on the project, is also available online. I believe this is the building where the Mexican restaurant is going in that I read. Uh, this Bel Air Cantina is the uh, the restaurant that will be going in Title Town Tech building. Okay. No, no. Is that walk-in cooler an independent building? Uh, I guess I'd probably defer to uh, Stephen on that question. Uh, Stephen, did you hear the question? Yeah. Um, so that that's essentially a piece of equipment, um, and it will be. Uh, it is separate. Uh, there's about six feet in between the existing building and the walk-in cooler. The walk-in cooler will sit on uh, slab on grade um, that will um, be elevated slightly above uh, where it is now so that it's flush with the sidewalk that runs along the east side of the building. Uh, but yes, it is, it is fully detached from the existing building. Um, there just wasn't enough space inside of the tenant build-out space uh, for a, a large walk-in like that. 
And it is screened. Okay. And Stephen, could you just uh, explain how the, uh, uh, if it is indeed screened uh, from the Lombardi Avenue side? So the uh, the walk-in cooler itself, uh, we're not planning for that to be uh, have a separate screening. Um, it will be it, the height of that cooler is about uh, eight feet, um, so it is lower than the existing fence to the north. Um, that fence, I think, is uh, like vertical uh, aluminum pickets, uh, about four inches apart. Um, so theoretically, I think you will be able to see into the uh, loading dock, but you can see into the loading dock already, seeing the the electrical equipment that's just to the north of uh, of the uh, of the new walk-in, as well as like the vertical tanks that Hinterland has towards the south, um, as well as um, all of the other additional um, kind of loading dock infrastructure that Hinterland and the title town tech building already have in there like um like a, a grease uh grease dumpsters um, other dumpsters recycling dumpsters etc and so there's a lot in there already i think uh, depending on the time of day and the the time of week there'll be stacks of pallet racking that's kind of sitting out there as well um the the thought our, our initial thought that at the time of submittal was that the exhaust fans for the kitchen hood exhaust would be sitting on top of the uh, of the walk-in um, with like uh, on top of like a steel frame structure that would sit around the the walk-in. Um, that has we've since kind of found a, a more appropriate and uh, less expensive way to a place to put those uh, those large fans, and those are going to kind of tuck in instead um, to the south uh, of that loading dock area um, in some space around those vertical tanks that are um, noted with those circles on the site plan. So I don't think we'll even need to uh, provide that screening because uh, those will kind of tuck in behind um, or to the south of the, the walk-in cooler. Um, so I can I think all the other infrastructure there will almost screen those fan that new fan location. Um, but um, yeah, th that might have been a longer answer than you were looking for. But um, let me know what else I can, uh, what other information I can uh, explain. So what you're really saying then is that the fencing that Hinterland has right now will remain and no additional screening will be done? That's correct. Okay, all right, I understand that. Okay, any other questions? Uh, if there's no other questions, I'll move to approve uh, the uh, exterior walk-in cruiser cooler at uh, Bel Air Cantina located at 12 or 1025 Lombardi Avenue, Suite 100. With staff conditions? With staff conditions. Okay, and Andy seconded. Yes. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the request for 1025 Lombardi Avenue, Suite 100, parcel VA-1512, with staff conditions. Are there any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm gonna log off. Okay, 6B, consider discuss act on a masonry wainscote exception request for the Len Festi Center edition at the National Railroad Museum located at 2285 South Broadway, parcel VA-115. Aaron. All right, thank you. Uh, I will, uh, whoops, wrong, wrong button. Again, share my screen. So this is uh, an exception request to the uh, site plan that was approved uh, basically a year ago uh, now for the Lenfesti Center edition at the National Railroad Museum. Uh, if you remember the uh, uh, edition as you see on screen right here is uh, primarily white uh, glass and uh, metal wall panel uh, extension of the existing Lenfesti Center towards the uh, Fox River. Uh, here's the addition, uh, the site plan that was approved uh, a year ago. So you can see the addition right here. And then continuing on, scroll down a little bit. To the renderings, there you go. So here you can see the uh, composite metal panel uh, rain screen system 
And under our code, we do require a minimum three foot masonry wainscot uh, when those metal wall panels uh, are on the first floor like that. Um, uh, the intent of the uh, three foot masonry wainscot is to protect the metal wall panels from damage from vehicles, lawn equipment, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the request for the exception uh, is to account for the architectural design uh, of the building itself meant to have a clean uh, look without the uh, uh, masonry. And I think what I'll do is I'll probably uh, step out and let uh, Jacqueline and uh, Jim step forward from the Riller Museum and uh, Bernard Schulbert Architect uh, to answer any questions that you may have uh, for them. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Could state your name and address for the record, please. All right, my name is Jacqueline Frank. I'm CEO over at the National Railroad Museum, which is 2285 South Broadway Street in Green or Ashwaubenon. Uh, Jim Hinsey, um, I'm with Bernard Schober, and we're located at 310 Pine Street in Green. Okay. So as, as Aaron kind of mentioned, uh, really the driver of this is we're trying to create this museum that's kind of a clean facility. Pull the mic up here a little bit, please. Microphone closer. Okay. There you go. Thank you. All right. Uh, so as Aaron mentioned, we're trying to create uh, this railroad museum, um, real clean uh, facade, real simple, um, really make this about the trains, make it about what's on display, and uh, at the same time create that iconic presence. And the, uh, the masonry wainscoting just adds another layer to that, that we were just trying to um, kind of avoid a little bit more of the detailing and fussiness of the building and really just keep the focus on the trains. Um, and then as far as the concern about the lawn equipment damaging um, the panels, we actually, we've accounted for that with a, a metal panel that is kind of made for a little bit more abuse at the bottom of the wall as well as um, a stone uh, perimeter uh, that sticks out about 12 to 16 inches to allow us to keep the lawn equipment back from damaging. Anything else? Okay, does anybody have any questions? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I have a, cons I, I like what you got. I, it's not that I'm against what you're doing. I think it, I think it fits what you're trying to achieve here. The only thing that I have concern about, is there any parking that could, a car could uh, jump to hit this addition in the parking lot? I see a car, I'm looking at your picture here. I yeah. do see a couple cars here. Is that beyond, beyond the uh, new extension? Yes, so it would have to jump the curb and travel probably eight to 12 feet before it hit it. But would it hit that glass area? Oh, the glass area? Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I don't care if it hits the wall. Okay. You okay. know, that don't bother me. It's just the glass area because that, um, isn't, that isn't gonna hold any vehicle if it's gonna come in. Right, it is curved, so they would have to actually jump a curb. I would have to look at the site plan and I don't have that right in front of me. I do not believe there's a parking spot right in front of the classroom. No, no, so, and I think there's a little bit of lift up by the classroom that's true as too. well before you get to that. So there is a wall plus the, the patio area, I guess, and uh, then the classroom itself. Okay, because looking at the front, I, I can see where nothing would come through there. It was mm -hmm. on that side was what I was concerned about, but that's still elevated enough that it couldn't happen that way. Yes. All right, but I do, I do like the view. Uh, the only thing I'm going to ask from staff is that we give them this exception, but I don't want to see it go to any other type of project where there is vehicles around it, uh, uh, some type of transportation mode is what I'm trying to uh, get across. Uh, you basically are overshooting this over a grassy area, uh, overlooking the river. Yeah, I don't wanna see that where uh, there's a driveway uh, vehicles around. Somehow we gotta fit that in to make sure this don't come before us thinking they're gonna get something on a office type building or warehouse. Well, that, that was my concern, Gary, because we had someone in front of us this summer 
talked to Aaron about it today, um, who asked for an exception on their storage building to not have to put the Wayne's coating on. There you and, go. and we voted that we would allow them to, that they had to put the Wayne's coating on, on a storage building. Right. So I want to remain consistent with what we require. Um, that That's my only concern right. because we made them do it on a storage building. So. Is that, can I ask a question? Yep. Uh, that's primarily for, because of the public being able to view this, right? I mean, if you have a building along the street, I mean, part of the Wayne's coating, I thought was so that you protect the, how the building looks eventually. Correct, this was on the back side of that so building. That's, okay, so my question here is, can anybody else see this Wayne's coating on this building other than the people that are in, at the museum? Is it viewed from the road or, I don't think it is mm -hmm. from my recollection. No, it would so be. So it's kind of like the back of a building, right? Yeah, in terms of I'll, the, if oh. I could just add a few things in context. So just to get to kind of Gary's um, question a little bit. Um, the code does allow the exception um, to be permitted, hence the reason why the Railroad Museum is here today to kind of walk through that. Uh, from a process standpoint, unless the village is willing to entertain an amendment to its code that would further restrict or identify or define where these exceptions should occur, basically the code is kind of open-ended at this point. If somebody re requests an exception, we are obligated from the staff point of view to bring this to the Site Plan Review Commission. Site Plan Review Commission then based on the merits of the project and the, the application itself can determine whether or not the exception should apply. So what I would recommend in this particular case is not so much look to create future legislation, if you will, through an act on today's application, but rather identify in today's application either why or why not you would require or not require the Wayne's coning to be applied. So focus specifically on this project. Why are you permitting it or why are you not allowing the exception to, to occur as requested? And focus primarily on that. Again, unless you're looking at amending the code into the future, that it in itself will be a separate action item, not something that you would take up this afternoon. Um, the, the railroad museum itself, obviously, this is a high profile facility. So even though that the particular building frontage and where this Wayne coating would be present, it would not, my understanding, be visible from the road. Um, but obviously it's, it's a high profile building. This is a, a showcase facility for not only Ashwaubenon, but all of Northeastern Wisconsin. So, um, certainly it's going to be viewed and photographed and it, it's a matter of what is the utility of the Wayne's coating and, and what architectural appeal does it provide to that particular, to that building. I can understand the political end of it. Uh, I guess my answer would be uh, if we can just clarify that where there's no traffic in front of this building would be the one of the exceptions. Maybe some of you have something else, but as long as there's no vehicle traffic would be one, my, one of my exceptions. But Jim, you did say that there would be like three feet of stone there in front is. of all of the metal panel. It will not be grass all the way. Correct. Three feet or 18 inches? I believe it was 18 inches. I'd have to check my civil drawings, but it's somewhere between, somewhere around there. I, I think it's a it, well, it's a beautiful building, Jim. It you is. do great work. But um, <coughs> and that's the only thing I'm struggling with is the fact that we, we made people put Wayne's coating on the back of a storage shed. So that's my only comment. Well, a storage shed and this are night and day issues. Uh, like uh, Joel said, this is a premier building with a, a beautiful view of something. And a back of a warehouse is not even w willing to discuss that because there is no reason other than to protect the building itself. So.
So, uh, looks like you've got something to say. I was just going to say that I, I agree with your point about the uh, essentially the uniqueness of this particular building and situation. And so, I would agree that as long as there's some assurance that the main rationale for the the rule is, is not going to be a concern. I mean, I'm happy with it, and I do agree with you. I, we've had other issues come up here, if I'm not mistaken. Gary, you might remember there was a while ago a manufacturing building or something in, in, in the industrial area. Yes. A lot of discussion about does it have to be wainscot in the back and yep. nobody yep. will see it. So we've, we've visited that before, but that those set of facts are not relevant to this. To so this, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I just got to say, I agree. I, I don't see a problem with it in this case. All right, we all agree. Then this, as long as there's no traffic to obstruct the building, to the back of this building, got to use the word back. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. So, uh, no other questions. I'll move to approve the project as presented uh, for uh, the railroad museum with staff conditions, if there were any. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Now, can I ask, can I ask that it be read into the motion that there is stone around this metal panel? Certainly. Mm -hmm. Can would you add that? Gary? I would add that definitely, definitely. You want to add that on the second? Okay. Okay. Everybody understands the motion. Uh, you know, is it worth mentioning the building is elevated from ground level? No, because on the set, well, where the where the metal panel is, it goes down to the ground. The front of the building isn't the one that has the metal panel. It's the side. Correct, Jim. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll leave it to long. Stone. The stone will just go around where there's metal panel to the ground. Correct? Where there's metal panel to the ground, we would have stone. Yes. yes okay. Yes. Okay. Does everybody understand that motion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, department reports. Aaron, your department always have stuff to report. Oh, we do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, certainly, uh, someone had mentioned earlier the uh, San Luis building, making good progress on the demolition uh, for the promenade. Uh, so that uh, project continues to move forward. Uh, in terms of staffing, we, uh, uh, we have a candidate uh, for our plumbing inspector position. We have an offer out. Uh, hopefully that comes through. So we made some progress there. And we are now recruiting for a full-time uh, code enforcement officer slash assistant zoning administrator. Uh, we received a few applications on that, but if you know of any of them who might be interested, might be a good good candidate for something like that, by all means, uh, have them contact me or, or just go ahead and apply uh, through our website. Okay. Thank you. Number eight items for next agenda. Will we have a next agenda? Merry Christmas, we do not. <laughs> <laughs> so we will not have a meeting on January 2nd? Correct. Okay, you guys get a week off. Okay, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, thank you. <laughs>